This video is going to go over the gains from trade. We're going to start off with two individuals that are on the TV reality show Survivor. So they are stuck on a desert island, and this island has snow-capped mountains. Okay, so that means that there are some freshwater springs from the snow melt up at the top of the mountain. At the bottom, there is a nice place to get some fish. So we're going to look at two individuals. We're going to look at Matt and his friend Dave. Okay, they are on the island together. They are technically competing with each other. However, um, they happen to be friends, so they are going to consider forming an alliance if it's ever going to help them both out. Okay, so Matt and Dave are given eight hours to gather as much fish and as much water as possible. They're competing against 30 other contestants and the people with the lowest amount of fish and water are going to be voted off. So Matt and Dave are trying to win this challenge. Okay, and from previous days, they happen to know that if Matt spends the whole eight hours that he has gathering fish, he would be able to produce 40 fish, okay? If he spent all eight hours getting water, he would be able to produce 20 units of water, okay? Dave, on the other hand, if he gathers nothing but fish all day long, we're going to say that he can end up with 15 fish, or if he spends the eight hour day getting water, he would be able to get 45 units of water. Okay, now I've chosen very easy numbers to work with, and we are going to assume that these two individuals have constant opportunity cost. So at the end of the day, if they are giving up fish for water, it's going to be the same ratio as when they first started. If you don't remember the difference between um, increasing opportunity cost and constant opportunity cost, you can go back and find the video on that. So what we're first going to do is we're going to draw Dave and Matt's production possibility frontier, okay? And again, we're going to assume that it's linear. So we're going to draw their production possibility frontier so that we can see Dave is in brown, and if he spends all day getting fish, he's going to be able to get a maximum of 15 fish, and if he spends all day getting water, he would be able to get a maximum of 45 units of water. So this is the PPF for Dave. Okay, and this obviously down here is water. Okay, so then this one up here, this is Matt's PPF. Okay, so now we need to figure out, could these two be made better off if they trade and if they specialize where they have a comparative advantage? So let's take a look. Now, comparative advantage and absolute advantage. Um, the easiest way, in my opinion, to find this stuff out is if we start off by putting all of the information that we have in rows and columns, okay? So we're gonna start off and set a paper up to show the difference between absolute advantage and comparative advantage. So we're going to start and put Matt on the top, okay? So this is the information that is for Matt. And we're given that Matt can produce 40 fish or, not and, but or 20 units of water, okay? Dave, on the other hand, can produce, so this down here is going to be Dave. Dave can produce 15 units of fish or 45 units of water, okay? So in this first column, we already have the place that we're going to find out our absolute advantage. Now, absolute advantage means that in real terms, one person can produce more than the other person. So I'm just going to put some absolute signs over the fish that Matt can produce because 40 fish is larger than 15 fish, okay? And then in absolute terms, Dave can produce more water than Matt can, okay? Dave can produce 45 units of water where Matt can only produce 20 units of water, okay? However, after reading the chapter, we know that trade happens where there's a comparative advantage, not an absolute advantage. So let's look at the opportunity cost in order to find out if there's a comparative advantage 
for um, each individual. So right here we're going to find the opportunity cost. So we're going to find the opportunity cost of fish. Okay, so we want to find out one fish is equal to how much water. Okay, so we're going to do this for Matt and then we're going to do it for Dave. And over here we're going to find out the opportunity cost of water. Okay, so we're going to find out one unit of water is equal to how many units of fish. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing for Dave down here. Now, if we take the time to set this up, all of the information and all of the questions that you would be asked on an exam are already going to be right here. Okay, so let's start with um, Matt. So one fish, if we're trying to find out the opportunity cost of fish, we're always going to use this very important formula. So the opportunity cost of good one is equal to the number of good two we have divided through by good one. Okay, so that means for Matt, if we're trying to find the opportunity cost of fish, we're going to see how much water he can produce in a day and divide that through by fish. Okay, so we see that in a day, Matt can produce 20 units of water or 40 units of fish. That means that the opportunity cost for one fish for Matt is obviously one half of a unit of water. Okay, and the opportunity cost for water is going to be the reciprocal of this. So we don't actually have to figure it out, but for completion, we will. We will say that 40 fish divided by 20 units of water is going to be 2 over 1, or 2 fish. Okay, And it's important in the beginning to actually take the time to write in our variable, because if we just see 1 half and 2, we're going to forget which one which one goes to which, especially which one goes to which, especially if we're trying to um, compute this stuff rather quickly. Okay, so now we're going to go over and do Dave. So Dave's fish, we're going to put his fish on the bottom. He's able to produce 15 fish, and he would have to trade 45 units of water to produce those 15 fish. Okay, so that means that. Dave's opportunity cost in order to make um, a fish is going to be three. Okay. Now, when we look over here at water, it's going to be this reciprocal, so we already know that it's going to be one third of a fish. Okay. So this is water. So that means that over here, we're going to have 15 units of fish divided by 45 units of water. Okay, so now we are going to come back and we are going to look for our comparative advantages. We have our absolute advantage. We know that Matt has the absolute advantage in fish. Dave has the absolute advantage in water. So now we want to see, in relative terms, who is it cheaper, for whom is it cheaper to produce fish? So the opportunity cost of fish for Matt, every fish that he produces, He's giving up only half of a unit of water, where Dave is having to give up three units of water. So that means that Matt definitely has the comparative advantage for fish. Now, the comparative advantage for water, what's a smaller number? Two fish that Matt has to give up, or only a third of a fish that Dave has to give up. So this is obviously the comparative advantage right here for water. He gives up less fish. Okay, so now let's see if they are able to work together and trade, would they be able to be made better off? Well, if Dave spends all day gathering fish, he'll be able to gather 45 fish. If Matt spends all day gathering, I'm sorry, he'll be able to gather 45 units of water. If Matt spends all day gathering fish, he'll be able to, spend, to gain 40 units of fish. So let's say that they decide to divide their spoils amongst each other evenly. Okay, so that means that either of them or both of them would end up with 40 units of fish, okay? Because Matt can, I'm sorry, 20 units of fish. Matt can get 40 and divide it by, between the two of them, where Dave can get 45 units of water and divide it by two, the two of them, so they'd each end up with 22.5.
So with trade and specialization, they're able to get to this number right here, or this point right here, which is off of the production possibility frontier for both individuals. So yes, in this instance, we are able to see that they are definitely able to be made better off with trade.